This podcast is available to everyone for free because of advertisers. If you would like to support the show and in return listen to an ad-free version, access our private content and join our Discord community for advice, accountability and our co-working sessions, it is only $5 a month and you can find out more at growthmindset.supercast.com or by looking in the episode description. A Liberty Seguros agora é Yellow. Tudo aquilo que já era bom continua igual. Excelência e proximidade permanecem como nossa essência. Porque não é uma mudança, é uma evolução. A Yellow está sempre em sintonia com você. É liberdade com segurança. A melhor experiência acessível a todos os clientes. Iluminando cada passo da sua jornada. Deixe essa luz iluminar seu caminho. Yellow Seguradora. Seguro para viver livre. Consulte seu corretor. Gratitude turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. Gratitude makes sense. It is the essence of happiness. But how do we realistically build more gratitude without becoming a Zen monk or doing 10 hours of meditation every day, which we aren't going to do? Hello, and welcome to the Growth Mindset Podcast with me, Samuel Webster-Harris where we are discussing actually practical tips on how to build gratitude. We're always told to be more grateful because it is the secret to bruising through life with an impenetrable armor of zen-like happiness. But one of the issues with gratitude, it is very elusive and momentary. We will easily lose it dealing with the endless problems that show up in our lives. They'll pop up, whisk us out of savoring that moment of gratitude and Human nature is to focus on problems, after all. And because we focus on these problems, we find the energy to fix them. The flaw with this is that it leaves us underwhelmed with our current situation and lacking in gratitude for it because we're already zooming on to fix the next problem. When we reach a situation that we were looking forward to, we'll fail to accept or even realize that we're living the dream because we're already focused on another problem. Some examples. My dad has been getting a bit frustrated lately and he's been tending his lawn for years and he loves gardening. But recently there has been an infestation of moles. He clears a molehill on the lawn, goes for a walk. By the time he returns, there are more molehills. Talk about annoying. You can see why he's frustrated. But this is only a problem that comes if you have a lovely lawn in the first place. Now, As someone that doesn't own the lawn right now, I'm like, Dad, you're killing it. You've got a great life. You've got such a great lawn. The fact that there's some moles in it, it's like a baller, nice thing to have. But for him, it's annoying. Or for me, when I first wrote this, I was about to go on an adventure to the Arctic and I had to buy a lot of very expensive gear and I needed that gear so that I wouldn't die. That's just one of those problems that comes with going to the Arctic because... One of my dreams is to go to the Arctic. I was living my dream. And so I actually needed to pay some of those costs for it. And hey, I could complain all the time or I could be like, yes, I'm going to the Arctic. Life is great. Now, what was slightly annoying was that it actually got cancelled last minute and that I had to buy the gear and didn't get to go. But I now have the gear for the next time that I plan to go and life is great. So I'm not complaining. Another example is I've got a friend who is, let's just say, obsessed with gaming and blockchain. Not to the point where he has like bad addictions in the area, but his dream job is working at a VC in gaming and blockchain areas. That way he gets to geek out, talk to the pioneers at the edge of the industries he loves, and helps fund their growth. Sick job, right? But he also gets a never-ending amount of emails every day along the lines of, I'm adding blockchain to my business, give me some money. And It's kind of the bane of his life because he just has to deal with all these annoying people trying to get money off him for just adding blockchain, even though they don't understand it, to a business that has nothing to do with gaming or what his fund invests in. And this is like annoying, but then it's a problem that comes with doing the job of his dreams that he loves. You may have got the point by now, but I'll carry on. My podcast, for example, is quite successful. And with that comes an endless barrage of emails again, just endless people trying to come on my show who aren't worth talking to 
and they're telling me to talk to them and it's kind of frustrating. That's the problem with having a podcast big enough that people want to come on your show. And I should be grateful, basically. It's like Crimea River. The recurring theme here is that lots of things which are great achievements that you dream of will come with problems. Whatever your dream is, they're going to come with the associated set of annoyances. Neatly summarized by one of my favorite sayings, if you want a pony, you have to shovel. I don't think I'm allowed to swear anymore on the podcast, but you know what I'm saying. Because really, in all these scenarios, there's nothing properly to complain about, as in I'd rather have the thing and the problem than to not have the thing at all. Reading those examples to you as I have, with the full context, makes it pretty obvious that the people in the examples didn't have anything to complain about. That's because I took the time to zoom out and summarize the great thing that's happening in their life and the smaller problem within it. Whereas as a human, you're just there living your life, doing your thing, and you see the problem and all you really focus on is the problem. In our day-to-day mundanity of living our lives, we stop being grateful for the wider successes and things that we're working towards and we just see the problems. And there within is why your mind gets annoyed. My dad has had his lovely garden for 30 years. He doesn't wake up and laugh with joy when he looks out the window and sees his garden. He wakes up and he cursed his moles. My podcast has been pretty big for four or five years now. It's just another day of running my podcast. I wake up and go, blimey, more emails. Oh God. And this is the problem. Our goal, of course, is to be a zen-like happy idiot. But it's just not natural without zooming out to the bird's eye view and adding the context during these everyday moments of our life to keep ourselves grounded. We need some different mental models to help us. We need a way to stay grateful for the successes we are used to, even if it happened ages ago. How do you do that? Well, you can plan for the moment ahead by accepting that whatever you do will have negative sides. It's just a part of the nature of life and existence, and it'll only stop when you die. It's not depressing to think that there will always be problems, and it's not a cause to give up now. It's important to accept that whatever you do will have problems and stop pretending that your life will be one fairy tale with nothing to ever get annoyed with. When you accept that, you can start thinking about the problems that will occur in your life that you actually want to have. Because if you have big ideas for your future dreams, there will be bad sides to them. So think about what those bad sides are and what they will be. Add those bad things to the list of things in your dream picture that you're looking forward to. And you can genuinely make a list of problems that you want to have. Because when those problems arrive in your life, then it's a very different experience. Instead of being annoyed at these problems, it's a sign that you're being successful and you've achieved your dreams. Instead of getting super frustrated when these little problems arise, you'll get to think, how awesome you are because damn you're now so much more of a baller than before you had this problem it's so cool that you finally have this problem instead of thinking i can't wait to have my podcast with a million downloads you should also include i can't wait to have a podcast so popular where my email gets ruined by a barrage of people chasing me to be on my show how cool would that be i can't wait to have that then it feels like a total flex And I feel slightly like I'm showing off by saying that and actually should get to treat myself to a happy dance. And that's cool. I've been following this guy who lost three of his limbs and he started setting world records for like amputees of doing things. He's super cool. He's got a really motivational social media. He's grown his account lately. He's just like past like 50,000 followers. And up until now, he hadn't had any like negative comments, but he started to get a lot more hate speech on his account because he's just got such a bigger following. And instead of feeling down, he's like, you know what, guys, I'm killing it. I've got so many more followers that there's people now chasing me, trying to make me feel bad. And it's just a sign that he's successful enough that there's people like hating him. Because if you do well on social media, you're going to have haters. There's no point posting anything on social media unless at some point one of your goals is to start having haters because they're going to appear. And if you let them drag you down, that's a problem. Instead, it should be part of the list of the problems you want to have it's a sign of how much success you're having. And a really important one that I think people really miss is we really can't wait to find that awesome someone that completes us in our life that we can share our life with. But when we think about that, we should always include, 
I can't wait to share my life with a human that has flaws I have to deal with probably every day. Because when that happens, you can be like, damn, I am so lucky that I am the one that this person has chosen to dump all of their personal crap on. Because God, I am so effing special that they want to put this crap on me. And then you can feel happy about these things as opposed to like, oh, this person's an idiot. Why do I always have these problems? Because that's just part of the nature of relationships and spending lots of time with someone. Okay, we're going to have a short ad break today as the episode is only a short one. Stay tuned. One of the big problems with gratitude for me is that we are told to think about things that we don't necessarily have context for. Sure, we might apparently live in the best year in human history for healthcare, and we might live in the top 10% of developed countries and apparently have lots of opportunities for the things that we do with our lives. But it's hard to be grateful for the fact that we don't live in a hut when we have no clue what it's like to live in a hut. Our neurocircuitry is adapted to be in stasis in our current environment, so we lack wonder for the things that are our normal state. The first time that people heard a recorded sound, which was only in the late 19th century, they cried. Back then, people had never heard music other than when it was being played live. Mozart was never able to sit back and relax whilst listening to his favourite classical album. However, these days, babies have probably seen an iPad and played games, listened to songs, before they've even learned to talk. It's hard for something to be magical if it is always there. Last year, I spent three months living in Nepal and I've travelled a lot before and whenever I get back from less developed countries, I'm always grateful for the obvious things like drinkable water, hot showers, hospitals, phone signal. But it was the first time I was excited about the idea of a road and being able to travel 60 miles in less than a few hours as opposed to it taking your whole entire day. But just because I've told you that, every time you now drive to work, you're probably not going to feel abundant amounts of joy at the fact that you have a road that isn't a dirt track full of cavernous potholes and landslides, but you'll probably still notice your slight annoyance at things like traffic. Just because we logically know that we have things to be grateful for, it's hard to really feel it. Now, of course, if you are able to get perspective, awesome, and I don't want to stop that, but I doubt it really works that well for most people. However, something I have found that does help me develop gratitude is developing curiosity in the magic around us that helps us frame the modern world as this wizard-like miracle that we're lucky to be in. The more time that I spend investigating the history of humanity and the incredible amounts of pain and drama we've gone through to get the innovations into society that we take for granted, the more I look at those things, the more special it all feels. Because you can wonder at the brilliance of your car or the food on your plate in a way that just wasn't available to you before when it was always a car and it was always just the food on your plate. I think in the same way, if you were to say, study film writing and movie production, you develop a much greater sense of appreciation for any movie that you then watch with a level of depth and interest that's completely lost on you when you don't have that knowledge and you can only take it at a more surface level. When you can appreciate the complexity of a system that can get you a fresh apple in the springtime or a flu shot in winter, you can really raise your baseline of gratitude on a day-to-day -day level. I have spoken before on the show about how to build curiosity in the episode about these seven weird habits that make you happier, and I definitely recommend listening to that. But to give a very actionable tip, some of my favorite resources to build a more polymathic approach to learning about the brilliance of the times we live in instead of engaging in the constant news of how bad everything is here are some of my favorite resources on youtube one of my favorites is veritasium and his investigations into just the different phenomenons of science and being a human and also kyrgyzstat and their unreal short animations about the wonders of the universe then in terms of podcast I can't recommend highly enough the Anthropocene Reviewed. Each episode, he takes a single item from the modern day and tells the most interesting and unusual stories about it that make you see it in a new way. Whether it's understanding the complexity of the taste of Dr. Pepper that just doesn't taste like anything else in the world, or the fact that in the 1700s, 
pineapples used to be worth more than $23,000 in today's money. And of course, pineapples weren't eaten. Instead, they would sit in the middle of a very rich person's table for over a month to show how rich they were. And yes, during that month, they would very much go quite mouldy and old looking. But because they were so fantastically expensive, it didn't really matter. Then another show that I really love, and another show I really find helps build curiosity for me is the Fall of Civilizations podcast and his giant epic episodes that document the rise and fall of a great civilization in human history. When we look at the news these days, it all seems like we live in a very unstable time full of violence and disaster. But when you start to really understand the human world and our history, we actually live in one of the most remarkably stable and safe eras of all time. And I think it's important to build more awareness of that. In terms of books, I could go on all day, uh, so I won't, but I'll just say The Lessons of History by Will and Ariel Durant is a good start, and we'll move on. In summary, there's lots of resources out there that genuinely will help you build a daily background level of gratitude through curiosity and wonder at the modern world. And you can improve your gratitude without having to join a monastery and giving up all your worldly possessions. And on the topic of giving things up and starting new pages, I did mention that I'm going to launch some new ideas next year. And looking at the lessons we've had today, it's not that surprising that I'm launching a show on the history of innovation, which is going to be a large melding of my favorite topics, history, science, philosophy, and humanity all in one go. And by starting at the start of human history, I'm exciting for how much deeper appreciation is going to build for everything we have. So looking forward to that. Anyway, that's all next year, and now we can recap on what we've learned in today's episode. So ultimately, we can unlock our happiness, we can be zen-like idiots, and we can have gratitude despite the barrage of problems in our life because they will always be there, and if we plan for them, we'll actually be grateful for them. Instead of losing our gratitude in the moment, we can see the positive side of our current reality. We can savour the whole experience and the beauty within the moment. We can wear our complaints as a badge of success and be truly grateful for our situation. And we don't have to do it with meditating for 10 hours a day. We can aim for a goal and know that it's going to have some small niggles that will knock us out of the moment, but we won't let it ruin our gratitude. The opposite is possible merely by planning for it. Instead of being knocked out of the moment when these problems arise, these problems will ground us within the moment and make us feel even more grateful. And we can be genuinely weird and that strange happy Zen idiot that we've always wanted to be. Now, there are many levels to Zen mastery and I think modern day enlightenment could be classed as the point where instead of cursing dodgy Wi-Fi, you're reminded how amazing it is to live in the age where you can easily stream information between devices all over the world. And if you could reach that level of happiness, even when your Wi-Fi is sometimes not working, then I think you've reached the point of enlightenment and you are the Buddha. And I still haven't got there, but I'm getting close. And it's really nice to write these things. And I hope that this sort of podcast has helped you. Remember, the general idea is that you can always find a way to nudge your reactive emotions of negativity towards happiness instead of anger, irritation, or disappointment. You can find things to be grateful for. It's just a matter of logic and working it out. And it's a journey, and any small improvement on that journey is an important step, and don't beat yourself up about it. Next week, we're going to talk about the problems you don't want to have and how to solve them. It's going to be a double part episode, so do tune in for that. And on that, thank you for listening to the show. As always, life is to be enjoyed. And if you want to enjoy your life, that starts with enjoying today. So be kind to yourself. And whilst you're at it, be kind to someone else. Thank you so much for listening. Go you! Your consistency to reach the end of an episode is legendary. I'm a hero! But when we learn things, it's important to reflect. So I politely invite you to take a pause, rifle through the biggest ideas you just heard. So here's your opportunity to hit pause and have a think. Okay, did you wrestle with some insights? Information doesn't stick when we race from one podcast to the next without using our brain to play with the knowledge. So here's another go at a pause. 
society. I'll let you off to continue with your life now. If you have any ideas or feedback for the show, I'm always interested to hear from you. You're the best! And other than that, please stay curious. Curious. Growing. Smiling for no reason.